welcome to my channel, the first ever on Shrinking with Carrie. It's as bad as it could get, gotta start somewhere. I'm inviting all of you to share my health journey with me. It is more about health than shrinking and being able to form a sentence. We're off to a great start. So I don't have a light. I had some studio light things. They fell down and smashed. It was old and broken anyway, so divine intervention. I'll get a new one next month. So for now, we're going to have to deal with this lighting because I don't want to put this off. Timing is everything. Here's where I'm at. Two weeks ago, I started this health journey that I'm on, this commitment to health. I'm trying to see where's the best place to look. I apologize. It's one of those wonky LG webcams. Probably while I drink some coffee too. Grab the beverage of your choice. We're going a little bit down memory lane. So it started with me feeling pretty bad. <laughs> I am diabetic. And let me go back a little further. Five years ago, approximately, I had a very bad A1C off the charts. They were like, oh, well, we're looking at your numbers here and uh, we don't know how you're alive. <laughs> So it was bad. And I came home and I sat in my living room. I was 259 pounds, so bigger than now. And I'm sharing everything on this channel. I sat there by myself for a very long time and I knew that I had to create change. I said, is it impossible for me to lose weight? Is my body not gonna work with me? I just can't. What is going on? And I thought, no. I've known for, at that time, I had known for three years that I was diabetic, but I just let it be this hum in the background. I didn't think it was as serious as it was. I was like, okay, you can't have sugar. I think we do tend to minimize things like that. It was hard for me to wrap my brain around just how serious and degenerative a disease diabetes is. I already knew it would shorten my life, but I didn't do anything to save myself. I literally couldn't put food down to save my life. And that really hit me. I sat and I sat and I said, what if I commit to only eating health food? I do not accept this. I do not accept this failure. I can do anything. Why can't I do this? I really was worried because when they told me I was diabetic, I was like, I'm dead. You are asking me to control the one thing I can. I've never been able to control. My brother and I have had this discussion because he reversed his diabetes and he's been a wonderful mentor to me. But I went and I sat down and I said, I don't accept this. I'm all right. Well, let's do an experiment. What if I only eat good foods? What if I get rid of anything that's not healthy for me? If I'm still fat, then, then I can say it's not my fault. At the very least, I can say I did everything I was supposed to do. And just that day, I started eating only healthy things, not processed things. I'm lucky because I like all food, with the exception of Brussels sprouts. Don't tell me it can be cooked a certain way. It's bitter the house, as they say. <laughs> but I, I eat anything, so why not just eat health food and see what happens? So I started learning about food, cooking. And something I had noticed when they wanted to put me on Glubiride, which is another, I was on metformin. They wanted to add Glubiride, and I remembered my mother's diabetes. Not a surprise, I'm sure, that it runs in the family. I remembered something. I said, you know, everybody I know who's diabetic, they go on metformin. Then they go on more metformin. Then they're on Glubiride. Then they're on something else. Then they're on insulin. Then they're on more insulin. Nobody is ever off medication. The only thing that can cure my diabetes or reverse my diabetes is me because nothing else works. Everything else just, it's either you get used to it, but because diabetes is degenerative, you have to go on more and more and more. I can't do that. I will not do that. There's no way I'm going to give myself shots of insulin. Not happening. I'm freaked out by needles anyway. And I, it's hard enough to test my blood sugar every morning. So I started eating and sure enough, my weight started going down. I changed what I was eating. I, here were the rules. You can't be very hungry. I don't mind if I'm a little hungry sometimes, but I, me being hungry is not gonna work. And that's the number one first thing people fear, I think, when they decide to go uh, endeavor down this road of weight loss, I'm gonna be hungry. Right away, it's like expecting yourself to hold your breath. So we become afraid of it. But we have learned that diets don't work. So this cannot be a diet. 
I cannot be hungry. Can I eat and still lose weight and not be very hungry? The answer is yes. You just have to eat the right things, the right amounts. And here's what I followed when I lost 59 pounds, of which I gained back 32. <laughs> but now I'm down eight pounds. Don't worry about following the math right now. We'll go over it. So I started walking. I became, that was my activity mostly was walking, but I just ate. Um, my breakfast was often something that I really liked, which was I Ezekiel muffins often with, uh, two eggs. Sorry, I can't go vegan. Gotta have my eggs. They love me and I love them. So a little egg, and now I would add cilantro and a little uh, lemon juice to get a little more gourmet about it, and butter. Not gonna worry about fats. We're gonna watch carbs. For me, what tends to work, and it's going to be probably different for other people. I'm an Irish German woman with type O blood, if that helps anybody. But what works for me is high protein, lower carb, uh, fruits, nuts, natural, mostly plant-based diet. So, uh, and I have to be able to have something hearty. I cannot exist on salad. That's just not going to happen. So I started going down that road and I got such a good handle on it that I became able to tell when I had eaten about 200 calories and I do prefer to kind of graze, but at times I would go, you know, maybe four hours once my sugar was very under control. Um, I could go like four hours and, you know, be okay without, you know, just having a snack. I do like to have a little, you know, handful of nuts or something in between or some raisins, something just to keep me going and staying active and busy helps. And I started losing weight. It became a game, but it also became my life. And I noticed it was like a golf swing. There are things that set me up for success every day, one day at a time. And it's... Am I hydrated? Was I well rested? I actually wrote them out and I called it my daily swing. And you're welcome to have a copy of this, which I have modified, or you can make your own. This is 2014. Um, sleep, hydration, exercise, vlog or blog, because those are good for me and that's going to be a part of this journey as well. Inspiration, affirmation, and meditation. You got to get your Asians in there. And then also a log. Um, weight loss to date, pounds to goal, and how, how do you feel? You can write anything down and keep that. I'm doing a video log, so I probably won't worry too much about this, but if there's anything I want to note about my hunger for that day, things I noted that made it easier, tougher, whatever, those things really matter. So like it, hydration and sleep are things I never really thought of, but all of those boxes have to be ticked. Just like forming a perfect golf swing, or golf swing, are my hands right, are my feet right, is my stance right, getting all of those things in your head. And no, I'm not an avid golfer, but I do enjoy it. So getting all of those things in your head, it, it will help you because if you go, am I, am I just thirsty? Am I just tired? If I, if I feel like eating, I have to know when it's an emotional connection and when it's chemical. And if you get on top of that chemical thing and, and change your relationship with food, what happens is you don't have to fear hunger because you will no longer want the things you're trying to avoid. You will crave the good things and they will satisfy you. It's so much better to live this way. So why did I stop? Well, a few things. One, I felt like, so what? It doesn't make a difference. I was self-sabotaging because I thought I didn't look any different or it would make no difference in how I looked. Even though it was about diabetes, I cared about that part of it. I thought my life would get much better when I lost 59 pounds and although it did in certain ways, it wasn't enough to sustain when I sustained an injury. I tripped over my damn dog and, and braced myself on the wall and something tore. Awful. And it was so painful for so long and I went to the doctor and they wanted me to pay thousands upon thousands, but I'm American and I can't afford health care even though I pay more in taxes. This is why I overeat. So anyway, I, I had to let that heal and then I had to do physical therapy and it took a while, but I was depressed and I also just stopped. I was like, well, I can have some diet soda. I can't can't have diet soda. It makes me hungry. It has something in it called phenylalanine or something that is very bad for insulin problems. And um, I'm a type 2 diabetic. So I went back to my doctor, by the way, after months on, on the positive side. And they checked my A1Cs again. And after doing this for like six months, my A1Cs were way down. 
and then the next time I went they were even lower and then the next time they were even better than people who are non-diabetic I had like a five and you don't want to like before I had been like a 14 and it just off the Richter scale that's the highest they can count your a1c's which in case you don't know are it's a way of indicating how you've processed uh, sugar your body has processed it for the last few months you can check your blood sugar daily but a1c is going to check your history and give your doctor an idea of how you're doing over time so he said to me I wish I had other uh, patients who could do this I really do and I felt bad when I stopped and I didn't really have a good reason ever since then see I thought it would be easy to get back into it but I don't remember that person I hadn't I had really lost touch I wish I had done vlogging at the time so I could have a conversation with my older self and see or my pr younger self and see what worked what didn't work what was that mindset that I was so good with that day in and day out for months I could eat that way because when you're not eating well when your sugar gets high you become someone else and you don't really notice it for example in the eight pounds I've lost in the last two weeks I'm starting to feel better I had already gotten my sugar under control and and had previously reversed my diabetes but it was starting to creep back up again and <laughs> I have trouble making sentences <laughs> and so I'm starting to feel better physically I do not feel better I feel exhausted I feel like I'm detoxing I'm coming out of it but I still feel like crap that's why I couldn't even do this two weeks ago because I could only focus on getting started it took all of my focus so now that I'm back in that place I swear it was like trying to I don't know if any of you are Star Trek fans I might be a little bit and it felt like trying to jump back into the Nexus if you're not familiar that's this place this stream throughout the galaxy where if you can jump into it you just feel joy and happiness and your perfect life is in there I love to imagine the Nexus but this for me felt like trying to get back into the Nexus trying to get back into that place and it was so hard for me to do and I finally just started to feel like crap enough and I said I can't get my housework done I can't vlog as much as I want I do have another channel called the nosy house route probably a lot of you are from there I was so happy to see 143 subscribers before I've even put up one video you guys are the best some of you don't even have to lose weight you just came here because you're awesome and I appreciate you um, thank you for for being a part of this because it really helps me I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. anyway <laughs> so physically I feel like crap um, emotionally I'm feeling much better uh, and this is a this is a weird time for me I'm 51 I have diabetes and polycystic ovarian syndrome if I can do this anyone can do this it's not as easy for me to lose weight but it is possible and it requires a full commitment to health food and like I was saying earlier I got to the point where I could tell when I had 200 calories I also got to a point where I could decide if there was something I really really wanted I could have a little bit of it and control myself and then do proper exercise later and if I wanted to have a dessert I could have it but instead of a meal that dessert had to become the meal and that was the way I could sustain for a long period of time and stopping before you're full is important too. eating slowly chewing your food you know really enjoying everything you eat it's the opposite of what I thought when I first decided to venture down this road I thought I'm going to deprive myself and do whatever it takes and then I learned slowly that I didn't have to do that I'm like I, you know what I can't do this if I'm gonna be hungry so I have to make sure I'm not hungry and then what happens is the foods that you make which I do like to make food and I hope to share some healthy delicious recipes with you I just went to the store and got a whole bunch of produce so if you enjoy the food you're really benefiting so much from it you can savor a meal and not only do you enjoy it while you're eating you feel better later you don't need to lie down you don't get that syndrome X pancake feeling where you know you eat something terrible for you because you wanted it you get that little brain buzz and then you just feel like crud and by the way nothing I'm saying here is revolutionary there are some really good videos out there's a documentary forks over knives oh hungry for change I really like that one a lot there's a, a doctor who talks about intermittent fasting that's a dirty word for me that term rather intermittent fasting I call it scheduled eating I like that so much better 
and I'll share that with you in my rules coming up. But there are some really good inspirational things for you to get started. And there are also other people in the community changing their lives and changing their bodies. I don't know if you all know Josephine, uh, Unmumsy Musings is doing a wonderful job changing her life, changing her body, and winning her health. My goal is to be fit at 52, much more than I am now. And that will be February 1st, my 52nd birthday. That's a while away. And I would like to lose at least, wait, wait, wait how many months do we have? Did I figure that out yet? 50 pounds would be great. Before November, I'd like to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to Houston in November, and it will be more comfortable for me to be on a plane, to be near other people. I don't remember I'll have to drive. <laughs> but it would be better for me to be lighter, and that's really what it's about for me. Health and not wanting to stand out. I want to blend in. I don't want to stand out and look better than anybody. I want to look the best I can be. I want to stop being judged and mistreated for my size, which does happen. That's not a theory. They've done tests on this. And in Psych 101, we went over these tests that they gave people, these uh, polls that they gave people. And they said that women who are overweight are considered to have a worse life. They're considered less intelligent. They are considered less. And people want to be friends with lighter people. I had a woman tell me when I first got to LA that my son probably wouldn't work at all because I wasn't thin. What the heck does that have to do with anything, right? Oh, I'm not monetized on this channel. I could say hell. What the hell does that have to do with anything? I just felt terrible about myself. I, I had, before I met my husband, I started to get a little chunky. I like to think it was all in the right places, but I was heavy by most people's standards. Uh, 177. And I had a guy tell me, um, I like you so much. I don't know why I like you. I, I used to get that. Like, I don't, want, don't know why I like you. And then when I didn't, you know, proceed with him, he's like, you know, you don't have the best body. Um, people always want to knock you down a peg if they think you feel good about yourself. And they don't think you deserve to feel good about yourself. So all of those things didn't help, uh, help my emotional state and help me with food, feeling rejected really helped me eat a lot. There is an emotional aspect to my eating. Absolutely. When I was young, I came home from school. I was six years old. I knew my father had been sick, but I came home and they were like, your father's dead. Have some spaghetti. I mean, that was the conversation we had. It was like, eat up. We ate our way through our grief. We just ate. And, uh, there were, uh, 10 children that my mother was widowed and left with. I was the youngest at six years old. And so we didn't know what to do. We just ate. And my mother had been in the depression, so she was just happy if she could feed people. That was the only time my mother was happy was when she was eating, honestly. And, and that probably stuck in my mind too, that food is love, that whole thing. But it's also just, I love food. I was born that way. My mother said I would eat anything. If she bought the Weight Watchers, I ate the Weight Watchers. If she bought this, I ate that. I just, my mouth was open, always wanting to eat. So I've always been that way. Uh, and I still love food and I'm going to love food through this shrinking journey that I'm so glad people are joining me on. I'm going to be really sharing a lot and being raw and being honest. Uh, right now, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to really show any body pictures just yet. I'm wearing <laughs> no bra. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Like I have no energy. I, I, I can't even believe it's all I could do to vlog. It's about as bad as it could get. It's pretty bad. My sugar is better, but I'll start sharing those numbers. I'm going to do weigh in Wednesdays. I'm going to share with you what I'm eating. I'm going to share with you the changes in my body, the, the revolution of my body. Basically, I'm proportioned. I'm just under 5'7". I'm probably closer to 5'6". I probably shrunk. But I've always been just under 5'7". And my weight, although evenly dispersed, seems to in recent years as I got obese, it became a spare tire, literally. Like, remember in The Breakfast Club where he says, some people, you look at them and you could see the outline of where a thin person used to be? I was like sliding into my seat because I knew I was on the verge of getting chunky at that stage. <laughs> so that's where we're at. I currently weigh 224 pounds. It's just a number. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. I'm going to share all the raw facts with you because I don't have to live with that number. I will say when I had lost my scale, what was it over a year ago? I was 232. I went a year without a scale. And when I stepped back on the scale again, I was 232, which means during my 59 pound weight loss, I had changed my set point at the very least. 
And if I can get to a goal and lower that set point, the set point is the, the, the number at which your body thinks you should weigh. Gosh, there's a fly in here. Sorry, I can see it on there. <laughs> but anyway, that's the number your body thinks you should be. So I want to change that set point through exercise, through eating right. I want to see if I can change that and find it a place where I can permanently be the right weight for my body, a healthy weight. So to sum it up, fat, sick, and nearly dying, it's about as bad as it could be, so why not start here? I actually thought of not doing a vlog because I thought that might put pressure on me. The last time I did this journey, I kind of went into a cocoon and it was very important to not share that. But I would have good conversations with people in person on occasion if I ran into somebody who noticed I lost weight. I really want to share this as I go along. I'm going to ignore any pressure because it doesn't matter if I'm the same weight in a year. I'm still going to share this in the hopes that it can help someone else. Because I know that I know how to do this. I know how to lose weight. And I don't want to tell myself something is impossible just because it's something I really, really want. That's the worst thing you can do. So I've changed my vision for myself. And now I'm going to change my body. And this time I'm going all the way. I know how hard it was to get back into this place, to get back into this zone where I'm off the carb and the crap food merry-go-round. It was so hard that first week. It wasn't, it wasn't that I, I had to eat that, that stuff. I just felt ill as I withdrew. And I, that food made me feel sick too. But this was sick in a different way. And as my feet start to heal and the nerves heal, they hurt. They hurt worse than when you have neuropathy. So I look at it as a rebirth and birth hurts. So it makes sense that I would have to go through that. And I don't want to scare anybody into thinking that starting to change your life and eating healthy is something that has to hurt you or be bad. That is not the case. But for me, going off of sugar or things that turn into sugar in the blood was more difficult than I thought. I did not even realize that I was incorporating too much bread into my diet and too much gluten and things like that when I do better without it. For example, I don't do well with pastas, but I do well with rice. I can even lose weight having white rice. These are things that I remember from before and how well I ate and how after I eat, I have this rule of using my food. So maybe now's a good time to go over some of the quick rules that I'm going to go through. One, I can't be hungry. Got to stay, you know, uh, well rested and hydrated, of course. These are the basic rules. Um, if you do have something bad for you, that means that you don't have something else later. In a very loose sense, I do calorie count. I can't do that all the time. I'm not somebody who can weigh my food and count this and count that. I have to be able to just get through the day. I plan my meals, so I stay ahead of hunger. That's another rule stay ahead of hunger. That means you plan to have something you can grab that's good for you when it's time to eat. I could easily get busy doing something or getting involved in other projects and then forget to eat until I'm so ravenous I'll eat anything. So there have to be healthy food choices. Stay ahead of the hunger. You have to put this first. It comes before everything. If somebody says, but you have to come to this pizza party and you know it's a day you're not going to be able to avoid pizza, you can say no. You can take food on your plate that you don't want to waste and you can throw it in the garbage because it's better off in the garbage than on your hips. You have to say, how bad do I want it? How much would I spend on healthy meals to lose weight? So there's that aspect of it too. And I'll probably do individual videos where I expound on these rules more, but that's basically the gist of it. Water, I have coffee in the morning and then I can have water and then I can have tea but no sugar of any kind and nothing that turns to sugar in the blood. Wait, hang on. Fruit is an exception. I do get some sugars in my body from fruit, so <laughs> that's a little different. And obviously there are some foods that you eat when you're having lower carbs. There will be some sugars. I find if I go completely cold turkey from sugar, my sugar doesn't regulate as well. Uh, diabetics tend to do something at night called liver dumping. So I have a little bit, a handful of something even if it's 100 calories, nuts or something. Sometimes I like cucumbers <laughs> at night and I'll have a tea with cucumbers. Weird combination, but I just like it. And then at two in the morning or so, your body, everybody's body, uh, will sort of take stock and sort of to sustain you through your sleep will release 
some sugar. Your liver will secrete things and and so uh, it's called liver dumping. For a diabetic, if you don't have anything in your bloodstream, if you've, if you've been very hungry, you might be predisposed to dumping more. Most diabetics, uh, and a lot of people don't know this, your blood sugar is very high in the morning because of liver dumping. And it can go down throughout the day with food, with walking. So you, it's really important to eat the right kinds of foods. I test my, I check my weight twice a day. I check my blood sugar at least twice a day so that I know how I'm doing throughout the day. Right now I'm at a place where I only need to check it twice a day. If it was very high, I would check it several after every meal. Um, so I'm going to share all of that with you. And if you have any questions again, please feel free. Thank you so much. I know this was long, but I really appreciate you. I, I'm so excited for this journey. I do have the nosy house for our channel that I am going to continue to work on. This is a more casual place for me, but I really look forward to sharing every day of this journey and, every, and what we can learn from each other from winning back our health which I don't believe I can't do. I know how to do this, I've done it before, but I'm gonna do it better this time, and I'm going to hopefully save my life. If not, I hope I can share with somebody a cautionary tale and save your life. Bye for now.